Alright, hi, I'm Justin Diamond, and tonight I'm going to read chapter 28 of my book, Giant Special Tokyo Love and Game. I wanted to have the rare designs, things that would make people look twice and say, I wonder where he got that. I went with my wife to Tokyo on a shopping day trip and looked for something to replace the worn old bomber jacket I'd been wearing since forever. The one my mother had been wearing since forever until she gave it to me. We went shopping in Ginza. What's the American equivalent of Ginza? I don't know. Maybe some upscale area like Rodeo Drive? Definitely some place in California or New York. Some ritzy, elegant place where the threads you buy are understood to be both automatically cool and expensive. The stores, like everything in Japan, rose up, not horizontal, but vertical, up, up into the sky. That makes it all the more confusing for some gaijin like me to try and make sense of it all. And in-store names that, even if written in English, have names that give you not a glimmer of understanding about what the store sells. That is your authentic Tokyo shopping experience. Of course, I was cheating. I had Sora to guide me. She proved helpful, and by helpful I mean at least one of us knew where to go, which part of Ginza to start at and where to head towards. She even knew what all those crazy store names meant in a real, practical way. Stores like United Arrows, Lush, 010101, and Eagle. Eagle was the place where she thought I should start. Eagle might be good place for you to get your light jacket, Sora said. The rhythm of her English was always off. Light jacket? I told you I don't need a light jacket. I need something heavier. I already have plenty of... I have windbreakers and sweaters, I told her. You could hear the annoyance in my voice because we'd been over this before. Not like that, Sora said, getting annoyed with me too. I'll... you'll see, she said. In a rare move for me, I dropped it and simply followed her through the crowded urban maze. Looking at the many Japanese people, we were walking in, around, and through. I couldn't help but notice the significant difference in color. I'm not talking about skin color, although Japanese people certainly do have different skin colors than Americans. It was their overall color, the color of the mass of people as a whole. Not the color of their skin, but the color of the clothes they chose to wear. Japanese people tended to wear earth tones. They would wear shades of gray and black that would form one mass of uniformity. It took a walk through Tokyo to realize just how colorful American fashion had become. Good luck finding even a single red or blue t-shirt in Ginza. But when you did find it, boy did you hit the jackpot. It's like Japanese people save up all that flamboyance and just dump it onto some poor exhibitionist soul whose job it is to dress like he's straight off the pages of an anime book. I said he, but more often than not, it's either a man cross-dressing or a woman with all the trimmings. Extended fake eyelashes, legs, always bare, hat, scarf, jacket with sparkly sequins. For women, beauty is power. The kicker of the whole situation is that I tended to wear earth tones. This is since forever, maybe because that, w that was my little way of standing out in the U.S. I'd never wear anything with an obvious logo. In Tokyo, however, despite getting the color right, I still stood out in every other way. My height was taller, my hair a much lighter shade of brown and wavy. Even out of the corner of your eye, my face was nothing like the typical Japanese. I may not know what it's like to be black in America, but 
from that little walk through Ginza, I sure felt what it's like to be a minority on planet Earth. Dozens of sidelong stares and glances separated me from the United Aero Store where Sora was taking me. The escalator ride up made the whole experience happen in slow motion. Instead of Gaijin glances in the space of a few seconds, as we passed people on the street, the glances came at the crawling escalator speeds. The up and down escalators were positioned directly next to each other so that people coming and going would face each other. The effect was magnified by the walls of this massive escalator shaft, which spanned the height of the building. They were mirrored so that even if the Japanese people weren't looking directly at me, they could still steal glances through the looking glass. I adjusted by looking up and into the mirrors. The skirts were short in Tokyo, and you never knew when you'd get an opportunistic flash of panties. Sora took me up a number of identical floors, holding hands as we rose up into the skyscraper mall. The way the escalators were positioned, oh. The way the escalators were positioned, we had to walk around to the opposite end of the shaft every time we made it to a new floor. Until finally, we made it to the level where the United Arrows was. I was excited to see this new store. Which of the clothing stores, which I knew, would it be most like? Abercrombie, uh, American Eagle, Express? I shouldn't have been surprised that it wasn't like any of the stores I knew. For one, it had no formal walls separating it from the adjacent stores. The concept wasn't new to me, but it still made me wonder every time I saw it. Only the layout of the store separated one from another, meaning an employee of United Arrows could easily reach over into the store next door and steal inventory. How the Japanese manage when theft would be so blindingly simple is beyond me. There was, however, a sign hanging from the ceiling that said United Arrows, brightly illuminated. When we crossed the largely imaginary threshold, the nearest employee greeted us with the standard, He sounded totally gay in a very false sounding nasal tone. It, it almost made me laugh, despite being such a standard thing to say. It meant something along the lines of, welcome to our store. In America, the equivalent was a much more simple hello. Sora had chosen a good store for jackets. There was a wide selection, but as I browsed through, I noticed that most of them were the same few styles in varying colors. Another sign of Japanese uniformity. From the large colored photos hanging on the wall, I gathered that the key selling point of these jackets was that they came with a bag made of the same material as the jackets, for easy storage. Do you see this? Sora asked me the next time our eyes met. She had one of the jackets off the hanger and was lifting it up and down, like an elevator, using only two of her tiny fingers. Yeah, that seems to be the style, I said. But is it a little shiny, the finish on the material? I, I prefer flat. It looked almost like plastic to me, the material the jackets were made out of. No, feel this, Sora urged me again, emphasizing the weight of the jacket, again, lifting it up and down with her fingers. Yeah, it is light, I said after lifting it a few times as she had. Light jacket, she said. Oh, light like it doesn't weigh much, not light like the opposite of a heavy jacket, I said. Mm-hmm. Sora said with a nod of her head. But it doesn't look like it's very warm. Huh? Are you sure? It's down, Sora said. She pronounced the word down with a thick Japanese accent. It distracted me reminding me of the time I had heard her use the same sound to describe a child with Down syndrome. In Japanese, the syndrome part was too difficult to say, and they were referred to simply as Down. 
with a long, drawn-out O sound. This is down, like the feathers, I asked. Sora gave another crisp Japanese nod. But it looks so thin. Sora showed me the tag as proof. Most of it was gibberish, indecipherable to me, but one part of the tag looked familiar. It was a two-column list, with Japanese on one side and percentages on the other, the part where the materials of the jacket were listed. Some things, like tags, spanned cultures. It was rewarding to notice I could read much of what was in the Japanese column as well. It was written exclusively in katakana, that special Japanese alphabet re reserved for foreign words. It was a phonetic alphabet, and sure enough I smiled when I read the word down and saw 90% in the column next to it. You're right, I told her and put the coat back on the rack. I didn't want to buy the coat for several reasons. I mean, first because of the glossy finish, second because it was the first store we had seriously looked in and I hated to buy things impulsively. But after romping around Ginza for the better part of the day and seeing nothing better, Sora made my options clear. We have seen just about everything here in Ginza. Did you find the jacket you like? I considered her question carefully because while nothing really jumped out at me, that first jacket we'd seen at United Arrows had grown on me. I wasn't sure which color, but it won my own personal best of the day award. I didn't want to go home empty handed. I didn't want to have to wear the bomber jacket again. But I wasn't quite sold on the United Arrows jacket. It was popular and therefore conformist. I didn't like to blend in with the crowd. It was the kind of I was the kind of guy who liked to be different. Then a key point occurred to me. At some point in the future, I would be living in the United States again. While the jacket was popular in Japan, I hadn't seen its equal in America. It could be a trade of sorts, conform like a Gap commercial in Japan in the short term to stand out in America on the long term. Let's get it, I said. Thank you all so very much.